Welcome back to Forbidden Transformation with Karen and Chris. Uh, for those of you that are new to the show, my name is Karen Holton and I'm co-hosting from Alberta, Canada. And my co-host is Chris Matthew of Forbidden Knowledge News, who is located in Colorado, USA. Our mission is sorry, our mission is to support and educate the people of Earth and to assist them to evolve and experience ET contact for themselves. And in this way, we help to create and participate in the new positive timeline. Today, Chris and I have a special guest, Preston Dennett, and we will introduce him right after we do our announcements. So Chris, how are you doing today? Thank you so much uh, again for having me as your co-host on this wonderful show. And thank everybody for joining us today. I am doing good. And how are you doing today? <clears throat> Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. So um, let's start with your announcements, uh, Chris, before we bring Preston on. Sure. Uh, I just want to remind everybody to subscribe to Forbidden Knowledge News on YouTube and, of course, all the popular podcast platforms. Uh, check out our website, forbiddenknowledge.news. <clears throat> and check out our new show, Beyond Classified. It is on Rockfin. Rockfin is an awesome new uncensored platform. Plenty of free thinking content creators and independent media there. Um, people like Charlie Robinson, Rex Baer, Jimmy Dore, um, so many more. Uh, we're also, this is going to be awesome. We are having Forbidden Knowledge News Con this year on Rockfin. There's going to be 12 amazing presenters, including Karen and Preston. Um, and uh, it's, excuse me. And instead of paying $29.99, it's only going to be $10 uh, to sign up for Rockfin. And uh, you're probably going to want to keep the subscription because of the amazing content on there. Uh, the conference starts Friday, April 2nd. It's going to be April 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. The presenters, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Read them off for you. We got Karen Holton, Jim Willis, Preston Dennett, Ross Ben, Jared Murphy, Pierre Sabak, Micah Dank, Corey Hughes, Sonia Barrett, Dean Henderson, Deborah Tavares, and Leo Zagami. Man, that's going to be such an awesome lineup. Um, also, if you become a premium Rockfin member, you're going to get last year's entire conference for free, as well as all our premium content and all the premium content for all the content creators on Rockfin. Um, so please check that out. Go sign up now because, again, that starts uh, just in a few days. That starts on Friday, and you won't want to miss it. Finally, I just want to tell you a little bit about C60 Purple Power. If you're ready to take back control of your health, C60 is the way to do it. It is probably the most powerful antioxidant known to man. I've been taking it for probably over six months now, and I feel better than I have felt in as long as I can remember, really. Um, I have more energy, I sleep better, um, I unexpectedly lost a lot of weight, and uh, I just feel overall just better than I've felt in such a long time. Go to their website, check out everything they have to offer. Uh, just click the link in the description to do that. You're gonna get 10% off your order if you order anything, plus free shipping. Uh, that's c60purplepower.com. If the uh, link in the description doesn't work, use coupon code KNOWLEDGE10 to get your 10% off. And uh, that is it for my announcements. What do you have, Karen? Okay, I have a few myself. I want to remind everyone to please help us to reach everyone by liking, subscribing, and sharing the show with your friends and your family. Um, our show is interactive, so please add your questions and your comments to the comment section that's, that is accompanying the live stream. I also want, I'm happy to announce that I have a new show called Convergence. It's a radio show. Join me as I go live on People for People Radio every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 4 p.m. Eastern, or 8 p.m. in the UK. And you can find me at www.peopleforpeople.ning.com. And I've also now have a backup channel on Odyssey. And so to find my uncensored content, follow me at odyssey.com forward slash at Karen Holton TV. 
And just a reminder to book from my website, a private session called Intuitive Time with Karen and Chris. Whether you have experienced the paranormal or simply want to spend some time talking to Chris and I, this is your chance. And I also offer one-on-one -on -one ET contact support and spiritual support for the many people who have had contact with beings that are not from this world. Or if you would like to experience contact with the higher realms and create your own inner spiritual spaces, I can assist. And if you use coupon code KNOWLEDGE10, you'll receive 10% off each of these three services. You can also support our work by purchasing one of my beautiful Zen Domes. Oops, I got a sticky note stuck to it. One of my beautiful Zen Domes Orgone Generators. And um, they are only available from my website. And because of the current conditions, we're actually not in a position to make more. So if that's something you're interested in, I recommend visiting my website and, take, and taking a look at the selection of what I have left. And further, all of the links will be in the description below. So that's it for my announcements. I'm very excited uh, to bring in our bring on our guest, Preston Dennett. He's been on before. And Chris, how would you like to introduce Preston? Yeah, Preston. Uh, he began investigating UFOs and the paranormal in 1986 when he discovered that his family, friends, and coworkers were having dramatic, unexplained encounters. Since then, he has interviewed hundreds of witnesses and investigated a wide variety of paranormal phenomena. He is a field investigator for MUFON, a ghost hunter, a paranormal researcher, and author of 26 books and more than 100 articles on UFOs and the paranormal. His articles have appeared in numerous magazines, and his writing has been translated into several different languages and has appeared on numerous radio and television programs. His research has been presented in the LA Times, the LA Daily News, Dallas Morning News, and many other newspapers. He has taught classes on various paranormal subjects and lectures across the U.S., and he is also an award-winning science fiction writer. Preston, welcome back, and how are you doing today? <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I'm doing well. Yeah, it's great to be with you guys. Hi, Karen. Hi, <laughs> welcome <Preston>. back. <laughs> I am really looking forward to the, the conference upcoming this week. I know you both have some amazing stuff to present, and uh, I thought we could actually get a little teaser of that today. Um, I guess we could start with you, Preston, since you are our special guest today. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about what you have to present at Forbidden Knowledge NewsCon 2021. Yeah, yeah, I'm super excited. I've got some really interesting information I'd like to share. I want to talk a little bit about some of my latest research into schoolyard UFO encounters. I've found more than 100 cases where UFOs are not only hovering over schoolyards, but actually landing. Humanoids are coming out. I mean, I found 100 cases, and in 30% of these cases, they are actually landing. And, now, is uh, the aerial school case one of these? Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite. That's one of the cases that really got me looking into this phenomena, and I thought it was sort of a one-off, unique. But nope, <laughs> nope, it's not. There are cases absolutely just like that one that are not well known and I'm getting new ones, you know, ones that I did not publish in the book I wrote about this. So I'll be talking about some new information people have not heard about these types of cases. Uh, so that's one of the, I'm gonna do a little bit of a hybrid <laughs> presentation because I've got so much information I wanna share. I just put out a book called uh, UFOs at the Drive-In. And this is not about you know, movies about UFOs. This is about UFOs that, no kidding, and I know how weird this sounds, hover over drive-in theaters, coming right down next to the screen and showing off to the audience. And this is very much like schoolyard encounters in that these are very low level sightings. They're long lasting. And these objects, these ETs are putting on a show for the audience. It's as if they know, okay, these people are here for an entertainment. They want a show, watch this. <laughs> wow, interesting. Right? It's really yeah. unique. I've never heard of this. I had my own case and started running into more cases. I'm like, let's dig deeper. And I started reading all my books. And I'm like, well, gosh, there's none in here. Maybe I'm just, you know, maybe this isn't a thing. 
But then I started digging up old newspaper accounts and digging into the archives of various UFO organizations. And yep, found a hundred, well, more than a hundred cases. And I'm telling you, this is not a coincidence. Theaters are being directly targeted. And the stories I'm getting are just mind blowing. And I, you know, since the book has been published, I've gotten like a dozen new cases. So I'm going to be talking again about new stuff people haven't heard before, even if they've read the book. Now, uh, even new cases with drive-in theaters, because I would imagine drive-in theaters aren't as prevalent as they used to be, you know? Yeah, no, you're right. There, there was a heyday for sure. The six, 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s was the real heyday. Um, they started closing down rapidly in the 80s because of VCRs and di you know, digital entertainment, home entertainment. But they never went away. You know, there was thousands back then. Now there's a few hundred across the U.S. mostly. Uh, but I got current cases, 2018, 2019, 20. Uh, I, th I think I got one in 2020 as well. Uh, and yeah, since I've been, that book came out, people are contacting me like, oh, this happened to me and this happened to me. And uh, some theaters are being uh, targeted, I guess, uh, repeatedly. But more often, they're, they're popping all over the place, kind of like a, a book tour, I guess, or a concert tour, and doing fulfilling their agenda of announcing their presence. So I'm super yeah. excited to talk about that. And lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about a sort of a pre preview of my upcoming book, which is due to be released in uh, one or two months. Uh, and... Uh, those will be stories no one's heard. So that'll be a real fun treat, I think, for all the listeners out there and all the viewers. So yeah, I am so excited to be a part of this uh, amazing conference. And I uh, can't thank you enough for, yeah, this opportunity. Yeah, that's awesome. And can, to just kind of follow up on some of the things that you were talking about, I think that people's personal accounts of UFO encounters and contact experiences are the most important that we have right now, because I mean, that's the best evidence that we have. And you really can't discount a person's personal experience, no matter what it is, uh, especially if they truly believe that this happened. I think that that's something that you, we have to take a look at. And I think that, you know, you getting people's personal accounts emailed to you is really awesome because, you know, it gives you a wide perspective of what people are experiencing out there. And uh, I really enjoy that, that you're doing that. So looking forward to hearing about that. That's going to be awesome. Um, and we also have a uh, panel discussion with you and Karen, we're going to be asking you a bunch of questions about uh, contact, ufology and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but before we move on from the conference, uh, Karen, why don't you tell us a little bit about your presentation? Well, my presentation is, is, is pretty unique. I've never heard one like it. It's really out of this world, pardon the pun. Uh, my experience is not with beings that um, um, interact with our solar system. This is, uh, for some reason, I go to an intergalactic environment, and things are very different there than here. And because my background is uh, in so uh, sociology and psychology, I've really zeroed in on um, cultural what goes on culturally, politically. And so the name of my talk is Love, Sex and Politics in Outer Space. And um, I think it's time that people start to stop thinking about ET in human centric terms. They have a very different way of being. They, the group that I'm involved with is at our next stage of evolution or development. So they're not that far ahead of us. And so I'm gonna get into a little bit of background. I'm gonna get into um, a little bit about the resettlement program. And then I'm gonna get uh, into uh, details about the culture, about reproduction, about you know, why are, are, are the beings that I have contact with, why don't they have a name? Well, because they're from many different beings and groups and cultures. And so um, it's a very love-based community. So I'm really looking forward to sharing this information. It's never been heard anywhere before. I've never done any videos or anything about the more intimate aspects of, of, of being with ET. 
and aboard the big ships. I'm really, really looking forward to, to the presentation. And I also am very thrilled that I was invited to speak at Forbidden Knowledge News Con 2021. It's just, a, it's really a thrilling event for me. Thank you. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to both your presentations and our roundtable discussion. Uh, the audience is going to have a chance to participate in that as well. I have a few questions for you guys. So it is going to be a really awesome time. Looking forward to that. Uh, and again, that's going to start at, let me pull up the schedule here. I'm going to read you guys the schedule sure. before we move on from this. That's going to be Friday, April 2nd at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we are going to kick it off with our roundtable with uh, you, uh, with Karen and Preston. Um, then that's going to be 1, 2, 3 p.m., two-hour roundtable. Then 3 p.m. to 4.30, we have Mr. Jim Willis. Uh, 4.30 to 6, Preston Dennett. 6 to 8, Ross Ben. 8 to 10, uh, Jared Murphy. And then we go, that's the final presentation for that day. And then Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m., we're going to have another roundtable with Jared Murphy and Jim Willis. Uh, from 3 to 4.30, we're going to have Pierre Sabak. 4.30 to 6 is going to be Karen Holton. 6 to 8, Micah Dank. 8 to 10, probably 8 to 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, maybe 3 in the morning, Corey Hughes. Uh, then <laughs> Sunday, uh, 1 to 3, we're going to have to decompress Corey Hughes's presentation with a roundtable discussion. And he's, by the way, of course, going to be talking about the Kennedy assassination uh, more in depth than I've ever heard before. Probably ever wanted to hear, but it's going to be it's going to be epic. It's going to be good. <laughs> and then uh, 3 to 430. We've got Sonia Barrett, 4 to 6, uh, 4.30 to 6, Dean Henderson, 6 to 8, Deborah Tavares, and to close it out, 8 to 10, Leo Zagami. Uh, so that is going to be great. Uh, I'm so excited for this one. Last year's was awesome. Um, you know, we had a pretty good turnout. You know, a little over 100 people showed up this year at Rockfin. We've already got over way over 1,000 people that are watching our Rockfin material and we're pulling in more every day. So there's going to be a lot of people in attendance here and we're looking forward to it. And thank you guys for coming in and uh, presenting at the conference. I really appreciate this. So I uh, look forward to that. All right, Preston, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about, um, I guess, some ufology and some contact experiences. Uh, first, I want to find out in your experience with talking to so many people who've had experiences, your own personal experiences and your own research, do you think the majority of people's contact experiences are positive? Yeah, I do. You know, when I first started getting involved in this field, I was horrified. Uh, I have to tell you, yeah, I was pretty upset uh, about the whole abduction phenomena. Uh, people being kidnapped against their will and subjected to horrific experiments is how I kind of looked at it. And it uh, took me a while to really become more objective, you know, gather more testimonies, firsthand witnesses. Uh, there's a lot of speculation in this field. There's disinformation. Uh, there's our society is a little bit fear based. Uh, and uh, this kind of colors, I think, people's accounts. And uh, I started to really look at what is going on when someone is taken on board a UFO and break it down and see, you know, is this a good thing or is this not? And uh, yeah, I've kind of come to the conclusion that this is actually great news for all of us. This is a really wonderful experience for most people. And uh, yeah, you know, I still have a little bit of trouble with people being kidnapped off a lonely road late at night. I mean, it's, that's hard to, you know, rationalize that, that is it being a good experience. But when someone is taken on board, certainly the most common experience is people are physically examined. And no one really likes going to the doctor, even though we know it's good for us. Uh, and what I found is that there are an enormous number of healing uh, accounts. I've documented, that was actually my first book, UFO Healings. And I put out a new volume. Uh, originally, I found 100 cases. I've now since found more than 300. And that is absolutely one of the ET's primary agendas, the healing of humanity. And I have found cases of people healed of, you name it, 
colds to cancer, uh, minor conditions, cuts, bruises, broken bones, stomach aches, back aches, uh, but serious conditions as well. Uh, I, I mean, uh, heart condition, liver disease, kidney stones, uh, very serious diseases like diphtheria and tuberculosis and diabetes and uh, the list goes on and on. 30 plus cases of people healed of cancer. Um, right on down the line, every part of the body, um, the ETs have cured people, chronic conditions, the whole deal. So that's very encouraging. I thought, okay, that's what they're doing here in a lot of these cases. It's not just collecting genetic material and experimenting. No, they are practicing medicine. And if you look at these ET accounts in an objective fashion, yeah, there's a very strong medical theme that runs through them. UFOs are, in a sense, like floating hospitals. Only real difference is no insurance required. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's really, I sort of like, wow, this is amazing. And people do have a lot of fear, but people who are having extensive encounters often move past that. And they're not paralyzed when, when they're on board. They're given free reign. They can walk around. And when people get messages, when they're able to, you know, have the peace of mind to actually converse with these ETs. And this is true for whether it's greys or praying mantis, mantids or human looking or just strange, strange humanoids. Uh, they're given very encouraging messages. Uh, probably number one would be warnings of nuclear proliferation, warnings about pollution, warnings about our warlike ways, something along these lines. They're very concerned about us. They're very concerned about how we're treating our planet. So that's really good news. And I think speaks towards why are these guys here? Why are they contacting us? And moving along those lines, it's also very common for people to be taken to the engine room or the control center. Uh, and they are taught how these craft fly literally in great detail in some cases, uh, particularly if a person is you know, educated enough to understand it, they will provide you with detailed plans on even how to build a free energy motor. A number of contactees are working very hard along these lines. They will sit you in the chair and teach you how to fly the craft, actually let you fly it. Not uncommon. You know, my book, Onboard UFO Encounters, I think that happened to four or five of the witnesses so that's really cool. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, and that is cool. Right? And so I'm like, wow, you know, this, this is really good news for us. And another thing that I found, and this is a very strong theme, uh, there's, there's a really strong spiritual component to UFO encounters. Uh, yeah, it's the, this is a nuts and bolts phenomena. People are being physically taken. Uh, this is not you know, a psychological projection. Uh, by any means. Uh, and people are being com coming back from their encounters spiritually transformed. They are taught a very wide variety of spiritual wisdom. So by that, I mean, people are taught healing, hands-on healing, Reiki. That's very prominent among contactees, uh, as well as astral travel, out-of-body experiences, channeling, psychic readings, uh, past lives, all these really amazing spiritual things are teaching us and waking us up to our own superhuman potentials. I mean, we do have the ability to levitate. Can't tell you how many contactees I've talked to. Like, oh yeah, I did have a levitation episode. I'm like, seriously, you physically levitated? Yes, I wrote a book about this, Human Levitation. We do have the ability to fly. <laughs> And I didn't think it was really related to UFOs until I started getting all these accounts. I mean, it happened to Whitley Strieber. He levitated. Uh, it happened to that doctor in France who was healed of an axe wound on his foot and partial paralysis. It's a very famous case from Jacques Vallée. He had two levitation episodes. So my point is ETs are teaching us what we can do. <laughs> and it's amazing. Yeah, the spiritual aspect, I think, is one of the hardest things to get across to people, especially people with religious dogma. Uh, I had 
very frustrating conversations the past couple of days with um, some pretty, you know, devout, I think uh, one was a Catholic, one was Christian or something. And I, I was talking to them about the spiritual aspect of some of these ET contact experiences and even my own, uh, and they couldn't handle it. And they got very angry at the conversation and I had to end it because, you know, I'm just like, it's not worth getting angry over, you know, but, uh, I find it that's really, that's one of the hardest aspects to get across to people. Um, is that something you, you think you'd agree with? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I have been on some shows where with, you know, fundamentalist Christians, uh, who believe wholeheartedly that this is a demonic phenomenon. And oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, mm, no, it's not. Uh, because, you know, I don't just research UFOs. Uh, early on, I'm like, wow, you know, you saw ghosts too? You've had a near-death experience. You know, the, and people have a wide variety of paranormal experiences. This is pretty much the norm for a contactee because they are blown wide open. They are I'm not only seeing UFOs, they are experiencing a lot of stuff coming at them at once. And uh, there are bad ghosts. There are bad spirits. I bought all the books on demonology. I did my own investigations into what I would call horrific hauntings where people were you know, brought all the way to the possession. And I can say pretty much, I mean, the evidence for de bad spirits and demons is pretty compelling. And for angels, for that matter. But it's a different phenomenon. It follows a very set pattern, as does you know, a UFO experience. It follows a basic series of events. And a demonic haunting does as well. Uh, it's a separate phenomena. A demonic haunting is really an attempt on the spirits to destroy that person and make their life very difficult. And, uh, you know, like by their fruits, you shall know them. Mm -hmm. uh, and when someone comes away from a UFO experience, uh, boy, oh boy, they are transformed positively. And yes, it can be very scary, especially in the beginning. And it challenges religious beliefs. And I think those are the people who are going to have a, a hard time with this. I know for myself, when I got into UFOs, I was very skeptical. Um, I wasn't religious, but I had my belief system. I was pretty much a materialist. And it shattered my worldview. And I was not a happy camper. <gasps> I was very upset. I was scandalized. And uh, so I, I, I kind of get where they're coming from. But I think it's very important to be objective. It's very important to be adaptable. Uh, you, you don't want to lock into any belief system because we are evolving. There's always room for improvement. There's always things to learn. And I think we have to realize that uh, it can't be too anthropocentric. You know, we aren't the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. Just look at the stars. I mean, for, for goodness sake, just look out there and you can, it's pretty clear we're not alone. And every major scientist agrees with that. There's just no way. Uh, so yeah, we're right on the verge of being welcomed into this wonderful galactic community. And yeah, we live in exciting times. There's a <laughs> lot going on right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm very encouraged about how this is all rolling out. I'm super encouraged to see our government and governments across the world becoming more truthful and transparent uh, with the UFO phenomena. And I think as soon as disclosure really rolls out, that's when we're going to see open official contact. It's coming. Boy, it might come this year or might, I feel it coming. Yeah, I, I feel something coming. Um, I, you know, I don't know if I, I trust the gov what the government's saying, but it is, you know, it's encouraging, uh, you know, to some degree. Uh, and, and I look forward to see what's, what's going to come of it. Um, Karen, do you have any questions or comments about uh, what we were just talking about before we move on? Yeah, I kind of wanted to get Preston's take on this. What I have noticed from the beings that I have had experiences with is that there's a term that we use here on Earth called Christ consciousness, which basically, instead of worshiping a separate being that's the Christ, we become more like the Christ. And in the beings that I've had experiences with, they very much are more like of my understanding of what the Christ would actually be like than many of the people who profess to be Christians here on earth. So in my thinking, if you're a Christian, that's a wonderful thing, but um, there should be, at least in my opinion, uh, some reflection of Christ in that person. 
So again, uh, in my experiences, my ET friends are one step ahead of us, but they seem to have, because they're, they operate on the love harmonic, because compassion and mercy and, and empathy and patience and goodness and all those amazing attributes are present in and dominate in their culture. So I, I just wondered what you thought about that, uh, Preston, because I know your experiences are a little bit, mine are more ethereal, yours are more nuts, on, nuts and bolts, but I wondered if you had any thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah, I think this is, I think you're right on the money there. Uh, ETs are trying to teach us to be autonomous, to really recognize our own self-worth, our, our own power, we, and let us know that we are a part of this universe. We are the universe. We are indivisible from it. And that makes us, we have all the power of the universe within us. We have, love is the most powerful force, I think, in the universe. And uh, I think this is one of the main messages that we have to really start developing our own power, raising our consciousness. It's all about consciousness. And uh, as you know, people are the contactees, it's amazing. You look at them, they're the kindest, most mm -hmm. loving, humble, truthful people. And uh, I'm like looking at people like, why is this person having contact? You know, why not this person? Who's having contact and why? I've started digging deep into that and because uh, it's evenly divided between men and women it's certainly not a matter of race or religion or education or geography uh it's all across the world i'm like well gosh you know some people have never had you know why why do some people and not others and i found two main patterns mm. one one is that it's generational they do seem to be very interested in following certain people and their family lines which I think speaks to a very strong interest in genetics, which certainly like the grays are very interested in. Uh, but beyond that, it's I'm like, okay, I, I noticed this very interesting pattern. It shocked me actually. And it's a person's profession, their vocation. Mm. It's what, what they are doing on earth. And the people who are having contact, there's a really high number of people who are doing good work for humanity in some capacity. And by that, I would say it's doctors. It is teachers. It's social rights activists. It's human rights activists. It is inventors. It is writers, artists, entertainers, musicians. All these musicians are coming out of the woodwork right now. <laughs> Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato. You know, of course, John Lennon is a really good example because musicians have a, a very strong platform. Uh, they're very creative. They can reach a lot of people. They're extremely influential. And this, I think, again, shows who these ETs are. They are picking people who are trying to help everyone and raise us up to that Christ consciousness, raise us up to the golden rule, raise us up to the knowledge that we are all one we are so integrally connected and uh when people you know have encounters they start you know for me as soon as i started investigating ufos i started having out-of-body experiences uh and very strongly and i never really made the connection that these two were integrally connected but i think they are because when i come back from an out-of-body experience i'm like wow <laughs> I am so empathetic and so connected to people and you start having telepathy and clairvoyance and just feel this wonderful connection to all humanity, which again is I think is the real purpose of religion, which has been a little bit lost, I think, in uh, some of the more fundamentalist or rigid religious thinking. People have to start thinking for themselves and uh, I, you know, I love people. I would certainly never want to pull someone away from their religion, you know, if that's because that's a very much a core belief. And I think that's why UFOs are so threatening to some people. It's like politics. It's like sex. It's like religion. It's a core belief that really uh, sort of defines your worldview and your place in the universe. 
And I think we're moving towards a whole new worldview. And uh, you can absolutely embrace the subject and keep your religion. Uh, there's no problem with that. I just think people need to be loving. As long as people guide their every decision with love, knowledge and truth and compassion, we're going to be fine. We're going to be just fine. Uh, yeah. so, you know what I mean? Very well said. Yeah, I think uh, I think that is the key because uh, that is actually the message that I was given during my contact experience. So uh, I think that's right on the money. Um, anything, any other comments or questions, Karen, before we move on? Um, no, but I was wondering if there is anything um, um, interesting in the chat. Oh, I'm, I'm muted. I'm sorry. No, no comments okay. yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Just wanted, didn't want to leave anybody out, but. Uh... Yeah, not yet. Okay. Um, earlier, um, you mentioned, you know, your presentation, you're going to be talking about the school visitations. And uh, we talked uh, briefly about the aerial school. I was hoping that for people that aren't familiar, you could kind of talk a little bit about what happened at the aerial school phenomenon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Gosh, I love this case. <laughs> Uh, 1994, I believe it was, November, uh, Ariel Elementary School is a little elementary school in uh, Rua, Zimbabwe, pretty remote area, uh, very rural. Uh, well, it's actually not that little. There were some 200 students. And uh, one morning, everyone was out on the playground, fairly large playground, no fences. It's just got kind of logs uh, defining this playground. And by coincidence or not, <laughs> I don't think it's actually a coincidence, all the teachers were having a supervisory meeting. There was really only one adult on the, on the playground supervising, and she was managing the snack stand in front of the school. And uh, she didn't see anything, even though a couple of kids came running up to her and said, something's going on. There's something at the ed edge of the playground. You got to come. And she's like, I, go away. You know, I don't, you know, you're, they're little kids. <laughs> kids should be seen and not heard sort of thing, uh, I think was, was her attitude. And she couldn't abandon the snack stand, she said, because, you know, kids will go wild. They can just raid the snack stand. <laughs> but at any rate, a bunch of kids, some uh, 60 students at least, saw these UFOs come sliding over, I think it was over the power lines. And it was more than one craft. These were like your classic flying saucer. And a couple of them were flying around and one landed next to the school, right next to the playground. This is how they usually do it. They'll land behind the school, right next to the playground. Little landing struts, you know, classic UFO. And one, two, three beings came out. All the kids were crowding up, you know, right up against the border of the playground there to watch this. Um, some were a little bit frightened and went running towards the teachers and uh, but most crowded up and watched this. And uh, one being stood on top of the craft, one stood next to it, and one came right up to the students themselves, five, 10 feet away. And the students gave slightly varying descriptions, but all basically described a short humanoid dressed in a dark jumpsuit with large eyes. And uh, it communicated with the students. And this I find fascinating because that's relatively rare among the schoolyard encounters. Usually it's just a sort of a introduction, I think, to the phenomena of sort of a hello, we're real. Uh, and uh, what's very interesting is this is an elementary school. Half the cases I found are at elementary schools. And these are our youngest of children. They're very impressionable. Uh, they're very innocent. They have no discrimination against people who look different. Many of them have never even heard of UFOs or the concept of extraterrestrials. So they have no fear. And uh, these, this ET came up and communicated telepathically with a small number of students. I think it's about 10. And they all received the same general message, uh, which is really the number one message adults get as well when they're taken on board. And it was about environmentalism. A Emily Trim, she's speaking publicly uh, right now about her experience. She was one of the students who got a, a communication, a message. And the ETs told her, 
that uh, you guys are becoming too technological. There's a good way to use technology and there's a bad way and you could do much better. And another student was told that uh, we sh should stop cutting down the forests, that forests are crucial for the survival of our planet. And uh, they purify the air and so on. And uh, that was her message. And another was warned about pollution. And uh, so these were all the sort of same type of message that we get quite often. And it's just so wonderful. Uh, and, you know, this went on for, you know, it's hard to determine. There was some confusion about time. Cynthia Hind, a very prominent African researcher, was the first one to hear about this. She soon brought in famed researcher John Mack. And uh, he also interviewed a lot of the students not long after this happened. And of course, this was the buzz of the school. Immediately afterwards, all the students came running to tell the teachers who were like, what? <laughs> what? Are you kidding? And thought maybe it was uh, you know, a joke or a hoax or something. But it was immediately apparent it wasn't because these students were very emotional about it. So they separated them, had them tell their stories, had them draw pictures. And the pictures of these students, I mean, you can see these are just so wonderful uh, and show exactly what they saw. And this encounter caused huge waves throughout society and is still causing waves. There's a, a movie that's going to be put out, a documentary by, uh, I think it's Randy Nichols. Is that right? I think that's his name. I think that is right, yeah. Uh, the Aerial Phenomena, which he's been working on for a number of years. So I'm super excited for that to come out. A number of these students are talking at uh, conferences now. And this is the ultimate schoolyard encounter, but again, not unique. I know another case in Colombia, which uh, Ray Hernandez of the Free Organization and the book Beyond UFO is the editor of that, uh, alerted me of another encounter occurred at the same time uh, in Colombia and apparently it involves the same exact thing. School, elementary school, a UFO landing next to the playground and communicating with the students. And yeah, the so area was, was so great because of the consistency, like you said, with the, the kids' stories. And not only, you know, right after the incident when they were interviewed, but they were brought together as adults and they all recalled, you know, pretty much the same thing as when they were children. And you could tell uh, when, uh, when you watch uh, James Fox's documentary, uh, The Phenomenon, when he shows about the aerial school, uh, that the emotion that it brings up in the children when, uh, well, they're adults now, when they talk about it. Uh, so that is really, you know, one of my favorite cases. And I can't wait to hear about uh, some of the other cases that you're going to be talking about as well. That's going to be awesome. Um, Karen, did you have any questions or comments about this one? Um, no, but, um, but the environmental thing is, is important. And um, <clears throat> from what I understand from the beings I have contact with, and, um, but even more, more than that, um, we are embedded, um, not just physically on our planet, but we are also embedded etherically and emotionally and spiritually. And we're part of this, this greater whole so what benefits the planet benefits us, what benefits us benefits the planet. And um, um, I, gosh, I wish the governments were telling the truth and were more transparent because a lot of what they're offering that looks like solutions in my experience and from what I know is not very good solutions. Um, you know, I don't know if it's because we're, we're on, uh, we live in a money-based construct um, that might be part of it, where money seems to be the god of this world. I, I, it's not really, but I'm talking about within the, the construct that we're also embedded in. So I think, I think dissolving of that construct can do nothing but good as we start to wake up and go, no, I'm not believing that anymore, and getting rid of dogma and um, getting rid of archaic belief systems, which it is, astounds me how many even thousands of years that the basic um, monarchy systems and feudal systems and all of this just seem to persist and persist and persist. And every generation goes, no, this isn't working. We need to get back to something better. 
sorry, I didn't mean to ramble on. I'm just mm-hmm. saying that I, I just really, really have come to understand through spiritual visions, through contact, um, that this is much more than just a physical planet where we kind of move in the way we move into a house. We're actually embedded and we're a part of it. And it's a part of us and it's all a part of each other. Like all the root systems from the trees are connected and all the fungal world is all connected and embedded into all of that. When we start to open our eyes, we see how miraculous and magical our, 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 um, our lives can be if we just pull our head, I don't know, out of the construct and start seeing things for what they are. And, and I agree with you, Preston. I think that's what ET is trying to tell us and trying to show us and, and um, help us because there's nothing breaks you out of the construct faster than a good old fashioned ET experience. Eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the ETs don't use money. <laughs> I, I haven't found one account where they... <laughs> Use that. They're all very telepathic and connected to each other. And that's what we need to do. We need mm-hmm. to bring our consciousness to the point where we can communicate and feel each other empathetically and telepathically. And we're getting there. You know, pe- people are very, lots of good people on this planet. They will give lots. you the shirt off their back. And we're, we're so close. Preston, I've got a question for you that I've wondered about forever. Um, you mentioned in the aerial school phenomenon that the kids noticed that these beings were wearing little jumpsuits. And man, have I heard about the jumpsuits with these beings. Like uh, constantly, they're, they're always wearing some type of skin tight jumpsuit. Is this very common in most of the um, experiences where they've actually encountered beings that are wearing something? Yeah, yeah, the jumpsuits are very common. And, uh, it can be a silver jumpsuit <laughs> or usually not though. It's usually like so skin tight. People are like, well, gosh, are they even wearing anything? And uh, this is definitely a question of mine. I think in some cases they aren't, they're not wearing anything, particularly when someone's taken on board. Uh, they don't, ETs don't have, you know, modesty. <laughs> uh, they're not a- afraid of walking around nude. I, I think in front of each other and uh, yeah, I, I do have a lot of questions about that. This is a research project I want to do. I've been talking about this with another researcher about a- alien clothes and alien fashions <laughs> uh, because often they will wear um, gowns or sort of cl- cloaks or different types of uh, clothes. Um, and in fact, going along those lines, there are a number of cases where people have seen ETs wearing and this is not even a joke, a uh, pinstripe suit. They will come dressed up in earth clothes. Uh, And I think it's sort of a device to sort of reduce the fear factor, which works in some cases, doesn't work in others. But they have come dressed as clowns or all types of costumes. Uh, So I think they are aware of clothes and uh, are using them. But yeah, the jumpsuit is very common. And I think it's probably protective for the most part, because uh, this isn't their planet. This, you know, I think they do come from other planets. I'm a big believer that these are people like us. In fact, more alike us than different. And uh, yeah, the jumpsuit is super common. And uh, to my understanding, our government does have some of these jumpsuits. <laughs> uh, Jim and Coral Lorenzen talked about this and what, just gave a little brief snippet in one of their books. That's the first I heard of it. And uh, I'd love to get my hands on one of those things just to oh, see yeah. what it's made of. <laughs> Definitely. That'd be cool. Uh, I got a couple of questions in the chat. Heavy weights, light feels. Oh, you, you pretty much answered this already. Uh, he asked, how do ETs handle money? And you said that they don't really, they right? Don't, they don't use it. Yeah, there's no need. They're all very loving and telepathic and everyone contributes. Everyone is, a, I've been talking to our contactee about this who's had a very extensive contact. And I'm like, well, how do they, you know, how do they organize their society? And, uh, you know, there's a lot of automation and things that, you know, might be unpleasant jobs perhaps, but everyone is allowed to contribute and explore whatever area of knowledge they want to pursue. There's no sexism. There's no discrimination. There's a wide variation of race like we have in our planet of, you know, in terms of skin color and height and body shape. And, uh, yeah, everyone's allowed to pursue what they want to pursue. 
and contribute to society in whatever way they want. It's all about pursuit of knowledge and truth and exploration. Uh, it's a really wonderful concept. I think once we come to the realization that if you hurt someone else, you're truly hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be a lot easier for us. Uh, yeah, money, boy, I understand why we needed it. Uh, but right now, our planet has such an unequal distribution of wealth. There's a lot of you know divisiveness, which is kind of an illusion, because if you actually talk to people, uh, they all want the same things. You know, I all my my friends have are spread out. They're both you know Republicans and Democrats. I mean, they are you know some are religious, some aren't, and uh, that doesn't mean anything to me. I love you. It does. It's wonderful that people have variation in their beliefs and their backgrounds that is a really good thing and it's not something to fear it's something to celebrate and uh that's i think what the ets do yeah very well said uh i got one more question from the chat painting the sky kingdom asks are you familiar with the farsight institute yes i am i'm sure you guys are as well the uh remote viewed of course they say that some of the messages about how bad we treat the earth is are related to the ETs making us feel guilty and keeping us enslaved. Do you think that this is a possibility that some, not all ETs want to keep us enslaved? It was new concept for me, but their remote viewing is amazing. All right. Thank you. Painting the sky kingdom. What do you think about that Preston? Um, yeah. I mean, there is a bell curve of behavior by, on ETs, which falls under the same umbrella as human behavior. It really does. It's not all puppies and rainbows. Uh, to say that every ET out there is benevolent would be incredibly naive. Uh, there are all kinds of people. And if you look at human behavior, I mean, it can be atrocious, horrendous with the murders and just the awful things people do. And I'm looking at ET behavior. I'm like, okay, let's see if this falls into the same umbrella. And it does. For the most part, ETs are doing, I think, what we would do if we were to visit a planet. And not all encounters are friendly and fun. Uh, I think some people do have negative encounters. And I think there probably are some negative ETs out there. But for the most part, no. And I have to tell you, I always ask people, you know, do you think the ETs are evil? And almost nobody will say that. The very worst I get is people are treated like a lab rat. They can have very painful experiences. And the ETs seem to show no compassion. Don't get a whole lot of that. But what I get almost nothing of is what I would call overt sadism, overt torture, um, that sort of thing. And I have to say, like, when someone's, say, kidnapped here on Earth, it doesn't end well. It rarely ends well. Uh, where someone is taken, and I'll put that in quotes, against their will, because the ETs will contact people and they speak to the whole self. They speak to your super conscious. They speak to your subconscious. They speak to your entire being. And on some level, people are giving permission to, uh, for contact, even if they don't think they are. And I know this is kind of a cop out for a lot of people like, hey, no, I didn't give permission. And if you're not giving conscious permission, you do have the power to end your contact. People have done this successfully. Uh, through just very strong willpower. Like, no, I do not accept this. If I made a soul contract, I am dissolving it. Um, that is possible to do. But on some level, I think that people do give permission. And often people are so in denial that it takes a really sort of traumatic incident to wake them up to who they are and the fact they are having contact. That they are part of this universe. Uh, so, yeah, there, it's not, a, I have to agree with that because every time I put out a, you know, a book or a video or something like, this is a really benevolent, lovely, wonderful experience. Someone says, well, this happened to me and I'm not happy about it. And my heart breaks because uh, they do have, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, some people's, their health does suffer. But overall, no, I feel like most people's encounters are benevolent 
and I'm leaning definitely in that direction, but yeah, I'm not naive enough. I'm not, I mean, I'm not so naive to say that these are all our space brothers and let's welcome them with open arms. You have to use discernment and for that matter, look at what's going on in our planet. There's an evil force in this planet. There's no doubt that there's you know, oppression of goodness and there's corruption and there's hatred. And I'm really glad to see that all this is coming into the light and people are recognizing like, where, wow, there is corruption. Let's deal with this. And that's, I think, why we're having a little bit of a hard time now because it's the light is being shined on the people who are doing, following the wrong path. Uh, people who are on my naughty list, <laughs> the banking industry, the, right. you know, the insurance industry, the, oh, they know who they are. <laughs> uh, and it, I think this is their last hurrah. Um, our vibrations are raising quickly and uh, it's, there's going to be a shakeup. Our government is, this is sort of what's forcing, I think, the disclosure movement uh, is because government is losing their power. We're going to be self-governing. It's coming. Yeah, the, the awakening going on right now is the most encouraging thing for me personally, definitely. Uh, and I hope it continues. I hope people keep, you know, questioning the narrative and waking up. Um, Karen, you got any final comments or questions for Preston today? Um, well, just I, to I totally agree with you, Preston. I think there's good and bad in every crowd. And I don't think we can white, uh, um, broad paint or paint with broad strokes what this specific ET group is about or that one. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're even from one specific race group, you know, there could be um, mostly good people and some not so good people. Um, but I do believe that everything is coming out into the light more and more and more. And truth and light and love can be very much uh, interchangeable words for, for, for what's happening. And the other thing too, is the reason the majority, in my opinion, the reason that the majority of our, um, our um, galaxy or even intergalactic area is based on the love harmonic is because it works. Within peace and knowledge and truth, we can accomplish anything. And the quickest way to shut that down is with ignorance, lack of tr transparency, greed, you know, all those kind of things. So um, I wanted to say, too, that I don't discount anybody's experience. I validate every experience, regardless of it being what we would call positive or negative. But I do believe that the love harmonic will win out ultimately because it's the only thing that works it is a creative environment where anything is possible. And so I'm very excited to have more contact and to tell people uh, more about my experiences and, and hear about your experiences. And the more I learn, the more I realize our, our experiences are not that different, you know? And so isn't that cool? So we're kind of forming a, a community within community as well. So anyway, I'm just thrilled to bits. Uh, to be able to have platforms where I can be honest about my experiences. And then, you know, we can talk to other people that have different experiences and there's, there's no conflict there. It's just so beautiful. It's like a big family. Anyway, I, I'm, I just really appreciate both of you and, and the courage it takes to come out and tell uh, a people because, um, you know, sometimes people freak out a little bit when they hear about this stuff. It's not, they're not quite there yet, but they're getting there. I hope. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I didn't really have a question. I just kind of <laughs> putting my, my two cents worth. Very good. Yeah. Preston, thank you so much for coming on today. That was uh, fantastic information and man, the conference is going to be awesome. We're so looking forward to that. Um, Karen, any closing announcements or remarks? Yeah. But before I do, I also want to thank yeah. you, Preston, uh, for joining us. And uh, it's just always a thrill to have you on any show that I'm on that you're on. It's great. And I love watching your stuff. So folks, if you haven't visited um, Preston's website, the link will be in the description of the replay. And please do check out his website and all his books. And he's got so much uh, amazing, amazing content. And I also want to thank you, Chris, for uh, being here and helping uh, produce this show because it's, I think it's an important one. You know, we're speaking to opening minds, which what better work could we be doing? So yeah, I've got just a couple of things. 
I want to remind people to check out the consultation and support services that Chris and I both offer from my website. And that's www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. And we now have a Forbidden Transformation Facebook group that offers private peer-to-peer -peer support. So let us know if you'd like to join and if you would like to moderate, that would be great. And thank you for your emails. You can email uh, Chris or myself at forbiddentransformation at gmail.com. And I always do my best to get back to everybody. And again, please, please join us on Rockfin for access to the upcoming Forbidden Knowledge News Conference, April 2nd, 3rd and 4th, 2021. That's just next weekend, starting on Friday. And again, it's only $10 for the whole month There'll be 12 presenters, including Preston and myself. We're really super looking forward to it. Now, I normally announce our next show. I just want people to know that I actually will be taking a few weeks off of the Forbidden Transformation show. Uh, we will be back. I've got some things in my life that I have to take care of, including a major move and some other things. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now, so we're just I'm just going to take a few weeks off to um, get my, my life all sorted out and then we'll be back. So we'll be letting you know when the next show is. I'm not sure at this point. So that's about all I have to say. And again, thank you both for being here and thank you to all the viewers. We very much appreciate your comments and spending this time with us. So I'll just say much love, light and laughter and happiness from all of us to all of you. Bye-bye yeah, now. Thank you guys, have a good one. Thank you.